Hello and welcome to the introduction to Microsoft Excel 2010 version. To launch our program, click on the Start option at the bottom left hand corner of your screen. If you do not see the Excel program listed on your startup menu, then come down to All Programs, select Microsoft Office and select the Microsoft Excel version below your Office command. The program then launches on screen and is ready for you to now begin working on. At the very top of the screen, we can see the title bar. Files in this program are called workbooks. So your title bar offers you the name Book 1 for the first book that you're ready to begin working on. Of course, as with other programs, you can save this file with your own file names. To the left of your title bar is the Quick Access Toolbar. This Quick Access Toolbar offers you quick access to the most frequently used functions that you use when you're working with the program. You can add and subtract icons here as you become more and more familiar with your program. Below the Quick Access Toolbar then, we've got the tabs. Currently, you're looking at the Home tab. Next, we have the Insert tab, the Page Layout tab, the Formulas tab, the Data tab, the Review tab, the View tab, and the Add-ins tab. Let me go back to the file menu, which I skipped over deliberately. The file menu is slightly different in the sense that it offers a drop-down menu, very similar to earlier versions of the Excel program. And of course, some of the earlier, more frequently known versions are still on this drop-down menu, with some new added features. But again, two new added features with the 2010 version of Excel would be the recent workbooks pane and the recent places pane. I will come back to this file menu on a later lesson in the Excel program. Let me click back on the Home tab to bring us back to our workbook file. Now, underneath these tabs, of course, then we have the various groups of commands. So, for example, the clipboard group is now sorted into the clipboard commands, displaying cut, copy, paste and format painter commands. The font group, again, has gathered up all font and formatting commands. And the alignment group would have gathered up alignment and sorting commands into the alignment group. Now, if you would observe, at the bottom right-hand corner of a lot of these uh, groups, you will see the double launcher arrows. By clicking on the launcher arrows, you will produce further commands available to you. So here I have clicked on the launcher arrows of the font group, and I have now produced the Format Cells dialog box. Within this dialog box, I have access to further commands. By selecting the various tabs on this dialog box, this offers me an, a very good selection of all the various commands, all to do with the font and formatting in this Excel program. So for now, I'm just going to select Cancel just to clear my dialog box from the screen. Now, underneath these tabs and groups of commands, we've got what's called the name box to the left hand side of your screen. It currently says cell A1. Now this is because when you're working with the Excel program, you're working with a grid area constantly. And this grid area, which is your, predominantly this is your workplace, and so this is really created by columns, which go the entire way down your screen. And of course all these columns have letters. So this is column F, this is column G, this is column H, and so on. And then, of course, rows, which go the entire way across your screen. And the rows are numbered, as you will observe, down along the left-hand side of your screen. But where these columns and rows intersect, they create the cell address. So for this example, I am now in column A, row 1, so I am in cell A1. If I select a different column and row, I am now selected, uh, I am now active in cell F4, and you can see this by looking at the name box here just above column A. It will tell you that you're currently, that your active cell is currently cell F4. Now to the right of the name box, you've got the formula bar. The formula bar is a long white strip just above your column letters, and I will come back to the formula bar in just a few moments. And as I said, the principal area of working is the grid area. To the right of the grid area, of course, you've got the up 
and the down arrow on the vertical scroll bar. And of course, this will scroll you vertically up and down through your file. Now, as I click on the down arrow, if you keep an eye on the left hand side of the screen, you will see the numbers changing, the row numbers changing to tell me that I'm going down further and further down through my file. And again, by placing my mouse pointer on the up arrow and holding it down, I will be brought right back up to the very top of the screen. If you have gone quite a distance down, a nice quick keyboard command shortcut to arrive back up at the top to cell A1 is Control and Home. This means you hold down your Control key, tap the Home key on your keyboard, and instantly you're brought back up to cell A1. So now let's scroll to the right hand side of the screen. Again, I'm going to bring my mouse pointer down here to the bottom right hand corner of my screen, click on the right horizontal scroll arrow and I'm going to scroll across so that you can see how the program behaves. It now produces the AA alphabet after the first alphabet. AA, AB, AC, AD and so on. And if I scroll further across it will now bring up the B alphabet. BA, BB, BC, BD, BE and so on. Now I will scroll back again just bringing me back to the very first cell on my spreadsheet, which is cell A1, which is really it's the, the starting place of every file, the cell A1. Immediately to the left of my left horizontal arrow, I place my mouse pointer on this little area here, where I'm now going to get up a little double-headed arrow. Let me hold down the mouse button and drag that across for you. So here it's doing two things. It's bringing across my horizontal scroll bar, closer and closer to the left edge of the bottom left hand corner of my screen but it's also creating a little blind for those can you see these sheet tabs sheet one sheet two sheet three I can hide these sheets by using this little arrow by dragging it across as well now just to the left of that where I was hiding these sheet tabs sheet one sheet two sheet three think of these as separate compartments within the one file so, for example, you could have a lot of work on sheet one, and then perhaps you want slightly different types of data kept in sheet two, but all within the one file. So, again, these are not different files, they're different compartments, if you like, within the one file. I think on sheet is a very unfortunate name to have assigned for these, because then people will think of it as just maybe one sheet, like an A4 sheet. This is not true. You could have 10 pages worth of information, 20 pages worth of information on, on the different sheets, and so on. So think of these as different compartments within your file. And to the left of these are the sheet tab arrows. And these are to navigate you through all the various sheets within a file. You may wonder why you need these when there's only three sheets. But as you begin working with the Excel program and you can add more and more sheets into the same file if that's what you want, then these become very useful to navigate you in the direction they're pointing. The first one, bring me to the very first sheet in the file. Last one, bring me to the last sheet in the file. Two little arrows bring you to the different sheet tab in the direction they're pointing. So now let's enter some data within the file just to see how Excel behaves. So we type the word products. I press my enter key. If I press my enter key, I'm brought directly to the cell below. So here now I will type in some products. type in some figures. First of all, I will put in what these products are about and what this file is about. So I'll put in January, using the abbreviation for January. Now Excel comes with what's called built-in lists within it. And for me to get an automatic fill for the rest of the months of the year, I'll show you a little trick. Place your mouse pointer back on cell B1 and you can say cell B1 is selected now because you can see it in the name box just above column A. Bring my mouse pointer to the bottom right hand corner using my thin black cross which is called the fill handle, F-I-L-L, -L, fill handle. It's going to fill in the remaining months of the year until I stop dragging. Now this will work in any direction so just let me show you quickly. If I click back into May which is the full spelling of the month, again bottom right hand corner to pick up my thin black cross, my little fill handle, drag it the whole way down. And as you can see, it put in the complete spelling of all the months of the year right down to cell F10. Now I would like to select those to delete them. So white cross this time, right down the center of the cells. And then, of course, press the delete key on your keyboard. 
and that's it, they're gone. So now I'm going to put in enter some figures. As you can see, the program behaves differently as I enter figures. Any text that I entered into the program, it instantly and automatically aligned it to the left edge of the cells. Look, bread, milk, butter, products, January, any of these are all automatically aligned to the left. But figures have automatically aligned to the right edge of the cells. And this is very important because Excel will treat text and figures completely differently. In other words, say for example I put in here 1 and I use the capital letter O instead of the figure 0. So I use letter O and then I say 5. Now watch what happens. And I press enter. Excel goes, aha, letter O. It must be a word. Let's move it to the left. Now this will not be calculated on any cell range whatsoever because it's treated as text and you can't add or subtract and so on with this type of text in a cell. So I, have, I must delete that out. So we use our delete key and I instead put in 105, enter and instantly you can see it's automatically aligned to the right hand side of the cell. Now again, let me come back to the formula bar that we mentioned earlier. First of all, let me put in the word total. Now, for me to total this cell, there is an automatic adder that the program comes with, and this is called auto sum, automatically sum up. The auto sum function is positioned just up here on the editing group, and if I click on it, look what happens. The program now proposes the cell range. It puts in a cell range for me. Oh, I'm going to sum up. I'm going to add up the cell range from B2 to B4. Is that what you want? Also, observe the formula bar. In the formula bar, just above columns D and D, you can see equal sum, open bracket, B2, full colon, B4, close brackets. This is called the auto sum function. And to accept it, we simply press the enter key and Excel will instantly add that cell range and put in the correct result. Now, if I select the cell, B5, the formula bar tells me that it's a formula that's there. It doesn't tell me that it's 1170. It says it's equal to the sum of B2 to B4. If I press my up arrow, the formula bar tells me this is 258. This is known as a value. So the formula bar will display the contents of a cell. And if I arrow back down again, watch how it changes. It does not tell me that it's 1170. It tells me that this figure is the result of a formula. And the beauty of something like this is if I go back into the value for bread for January and I change that figure, watch what happens. My formula in cell B5, as soon as I press my enter key, it's going to change. Ready? Look how it instantly recalculates because it's told the formula instructs the program please automatically sum the cell range from B2 to B4 and so anything that changes from B2 to B4 will automatically be reflected in that formula and instantly the the uh, the figure will be put in, the value will be put into the cell. So this is the very basics of the Excel and it's just an overview of the Excel window. So look out for my next video which will be Introduction to Microsoft Excel Lesson 2 which will show you a lot more on how to work with the Excel program and how to put in more formulas and how to apply formatting etc. Thank you for watching the Step by Step by Miriam video uh, on Excel 2010.